Today's video is sponsored by Keeps. As a kid growing up in Marshfield, Massachusetts, Zach Triner, like most New England kids, was a big time Patriots fan. The kids that Zach would play ball with out in the yard would pretend to be Tom Brady, dropping back saying stuff like, I can fire that whether they could or not. Zach was also a huge Brady fan, but was a little bit more, let's say, reasonable. Zach didn't really see himself in Brady, but he did see himself in another New England Patriot that you probably never heard of, long snapper Lonnie Paxton. And while a huge part of the Brady mythos is the fact that he was drafted in the sixth round, Lonnie Paxton came into the league the same year and dude actually wasn't drafted at all, but was a part of three Super Bowl championship teams. So Zach proudly rocked his Lonnie Paxton jersey, even though he had to constantly explain the casuals who dude was. As a fifth grader, Zach declared his dream was to play in the NFL. And while he never lost his love for football, in high school, he split time between football and lacrosse. And over time, his future seemed to be tilting towards the latter. However, in a weird twist of fate, a random moment at high school summer camp would gradually begin to change that trajectory, slowly realigning his dream with his actual destiny. And a journey that would take him from college lacrosse to D2 football to holding a nine to five would somehow all lead to the absolute pinnacle of the football world. This is the story of Zach Trainer, an ordinary kid who achieved extraordinary results without further ado y'all already know what time it is man cue the way all right real quick before we jump into the video a quick word from today's video sponsor keeps now it's been proven that two out of every three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they hit 35 only got a couple years left before i hit it man so this is real for me all right now the best way to treat this is to get out in front of it so being proactive is gonna be your best bet in this case now keeps has been proven to combat hair loss and they've kind of revolutionized the way men are treated for this issue all together it's both affordable and convenient as they deliver the treatments right to your door every three months so you ain't gotta worry about standing in line now the process can take about four to six months to start working so again you'll want to be proactive here and get out in front of this now if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss go to keeps.com slash flimlo again that's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash flimlo and that's going to save you 50 percent off your first order shout out to keeps once again for sponsoring the video without further ado let's get it during the summer camp we spoke about in the intro, Zach noticed some players over on the far side of the field being coached up and he curiously wandered over. What he discovered was that the team was looking to fill an extremely non-glamorous yet very important position, long snapper. And you already know the Lonnie Paxton fan wanted the spot more than anybody else. He competed for it and got it. Ever since that day, the position was his. This was a dream come true. Dude was a dog at long snapper, but you know, it's long snapper, so what's a nice way to say this? Nobody cared, okay? He did his thing, but at the end of his high school career, Zach had to make a choice. While he loved both sports, lacrosse looked like the best path forward as it seemed to offer better college opportunities for him. So in 2011, he accepted a lacrosse scholarship to attend Siena College. There, he had both some individual and team success as he scored a goal as a freshman. In addition to that, his team won the conference championship, so dude was off to a pretty good start. But oftentimes with success comes change and once the coaching carousel kicked off, Zach's lacrosse coach moved on to greener pastures immediately taking a job over at Rutgers. This sort of opened Zach's eyes, if you will. In team sports, there's this team first culture that's always perpetuated, right? But when a coach recruits a kid and then immediately dips the next year for more bread, the kid is hit with a dose of reality. And look, the team first concept is an important mentality. It's an important thing to preach. And there's definitely a place for that type of thinking. But at the end of the day, nobody's laying awake thinking about your future but you. Zach missed football and as much as he loved lacrosse, his dream was to play in the NFL, not the PLL, right? So something had to shake. Now Sienna, the school he was attending, had actually cut their football program back in 2004. So Zach decided to transfer to Assumption College, a D2 school near his hometown where he played long snapper, D tackle, D end, tight end, fullback, kickoff, and look, wherever his coaches would allow him to line up, dude was doing everything he possibly could to be on the field 
as you know often as possible. After three years at Assumption, Zach recorded 66 tackles and eight and a half sacks. Not world shattering, but also not too bad for a long snapper, right? But like the vast majority of college athletes, especially at the D2 level, when it was over, it was over. No combine invites or calls from NFL teams. The dream was done. And it was time to go get that nine to five. Now, this is a crucial part in the story. And this is where a lot of guys get tripped up. You want to continue following your dreams, but you got responsibilities as a man. You need to work right now, but you also want to continue pursuing your larger goal. The ideal way to handle this, you got to do both at the same time. And that right there, no easy feat. Zach took a job as an investment consultant by day, but continued to work out five times a week keeping his long snapping skills sharp. His days were long and while many guys start out this way, doing this constantly over and over every day, not getting nowhere over the course of years, I don't care what you say, that's something that the majority of people are not prepared to do. But old Zach Trainer, dude was the exception. One of his favorite songs was by country music legend Tim McGraw, a song called Live Like You Were Dying. It's basically a song about a man diagnosed with a terminal illness. When he first finds out, he kind of sinks into a depression, but after he kind of comes to grips with it, he decides, I'm gonna live this precious time I have left to the absolute fullest. So he decides to make the most of his last days and he starts living a fuller, more meaningful life. Like he start really going for his goals. He going skydive, he doing all type of stuff. He loving deeper, you feel me? He expressing himself more to the people he care about. Just really, really getting the most out of every single moment. And it's dope because he actually gets to the point where he kind of feels sorry for the people who have not been diagnosed with this illness because They'll never get the opportunity to experience what it's like to live life like you were dying. It's a dope song, actually. I ain't a country music fan, but like, yo, the song is hard. Anyway, that was kind of Zach's theme song, like the soundtrack to his grind, if you will. For some of y'all, it might be Lose Yourself by Eminem. For me, it might be Sky is the Limit by Wayne. You know, different strokes for different folks, but everybody can connect with that feeling of whatever your song is that just really gets you going that's what this song meant to him okay so long story short he went all in and he approached his nfl career as if you know this was going to be his last go round you feel me he hired an agent to field calls from teams and anytime a workout for a long snapper was available dude was ready in 2015 he got his first opportunity his beloved patriots needed a long snapper i'm sure all type of thoughts went through his mind like yo if i can make this team my team but ultimately it didn't go anywhere he had that workout and that was pretty much it the following year 2016 he was invited to a houston texans mini camp but not long after the phone rang turn in your playbook we're gonna release you didn't make it every time dude got a shot with a team he would make it one step further but you gotta remember real time is going by and there's no guarantees despite the fact that dude was still working his day job every single day and literal years were going by this man never gave up on his dream in 2017 he made it through otas with the jets but was cut shortly after into that same year he signed the futures contract with the packers got through minicamp got through otas was still on the roster check your boy zach out you know he made it into training camp but every week or so zach saw guys he lined up with make that final walk to turn in their playbooks and go home he sat up at night dreading that knock on the door from the nfl grim reaper one of the final sounds you hear before it all comes to an end he made it to the first preseason game and performed well made it to another same thing but on cut down day it happened he got that dreaded knock on the door and it damn sure wasn't DoorDash. At this point, dude had been trying for three long years, doing everything in his power to achieve his dream. He had come so far, but he couldn't get over that last hump. I'm sure it damn near broke him at times, but he kept going. Four long years had passed with Zach doing double duty as an investment consultant and an NFL hopeful, but still nothing had materialized. But in 2019, an opportunity with the Tampa Bay Bucks presented itself but this time was different Tampa Bay didn't have an established long snapper who they trusted this was truly an open competition mini camp OTAs training camp still good preseason week one wasn't the end of his run not two not three not four dude was still hanging on when cut day rolled around his heart raced every single time the phone rang. 
He didn't hear anything from the team and when you're hoping to not get cut, that is amazing news. Zach had finally gotten over that hump. He'd officially made it to the NFL. Even better, when the regular season rolled around, he was not only on the squad, he was the long snapper for the Tampa Bay Bucks. An unbelievable journey and story of perseverance, man. It was everything he dreamed of since the fifth grade. But a guy who I described earlier in the video as reasonable was about to experience the most unreasonable just unimaginable inconceivable turn of events and it was all going down within the next one year after trying and failing for years, Zach Triner was finally an NFL player. On opening day of the 2019 season, Zach held back emotions as he threw on his pads, helmet, and jersey and got ready to jog out onto the field. But I'm pretty damn sure this one unbelievable coincidence, it had to get it out of him. I know he shed tears. I know it. On opening day, he jogged out onto the field and like something out of a movie, performing a live concert behind the end zone was none other than country music legend Tim McGraw singing Zach's favorite song, Live Like You Were Dying. Bro, this right here is what you call fate, destiny. You were supposed to be right here, right now, in this moment. And I imagine he flashed back to the grind. He flashed back to the doubts, the failures, all the times he came up short. He probably stood there and took it all in for a moment. Then he put on his helmet and did what he came there to do. His first year, 2019, Zach served as the Bucks starting long snapper for all 16 games. So the story's already crazy right there, like that's good enough. But then the following year, guess who comes to town? Tom King Brady. Now remember from the intro, Zach grew up a diehard Patriots fan. And most of the kids he was playing out in the yard with was pretending to be Tom Brady. So he went from playing with a bunch of make-believe Tom Brady's to playing with the real deal. Zach's friends and family blew his phone up, man. They couldn't believe it. But Zach was able to hold it together because in his mind, he'd already met the GOAT. That's right. Good old Lonnie Paxton, the ex-Patriots long snapper. Zach fanned out when he met him and he told Lonnie he had his jersey growing up. And Lonnie with a straight face looked at him and said, what? Why? You might be the only non-family member to have my jersey. And that right there is how that awkward interaction went. So anyway, he meets Brady, he goes up, shakes his hand, breaks the ice. Then everybody gets to work. And from a macro perspective, we all know what happens next. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers win the Super Bowl. Tom Brady gets his seventh Super Bowl ring. But when you zoom all the way in, a cat who was an 11 year old Patriots fan when Brady won his first Super Bowl is now on his team after making a pretty unlikely journey to the NFL and landing in this spot. And if you zoom in even further, you see a lacrosse playing long snapper turned investment consultant who plays a position you wouldn't notice unless he made a mistake. That dude, after everything he had been through, was now a Super Bowl champion. So, I guess dreams do come true. 